Hi there, welcome to Fireside with Peter Adkison. I am Peter Adkison, my co-host is Emma Larkins, and our guest today is James E. Hayes Jr., or Jay, as we like to call him. Uh, and we are streaming live from Caldea, uh, Caldea Studios here in Gen Con TV. Um, on this show, we like to go in search of the untold stories behind your favorite games. And in this season, we are continuing our coverage of Magic the Gathering. And the, our guest today, I bet, I, I'm brimming with confidence that you're going to hear stories that you've never heard before <laughs> because I don't think Jay has been interviewed probably that many times. I, you know, I, th I think, you know, we, um, he's a little bit outside the usual suspects, but Jay did an incredible amount of really important work at Wizards of the Coast, and I'm really excited to have you on the show. Well, thank you, Peter. Yeah. Glad to be here. Thanks, thanks. It's uh, it's good to see you. Love the studio. Man. <laughs> Thank, yeah, yeah. Love the Caldea, the yeah, Caldea it's Studios. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Um, okay, so hey, um, what I like to start with is let's get the audience to know who is Jay Hayes. Who was Jay Hayes before we started with you know Wizards of the Coast? Oh wow. Well, I was a skinny, knobby kneed little guy. <laughs> <laughs> No, I really was. I didn't even credit. Now you're just knobby. I was like 30. Mm. You know? uh, I had been, uh, I'd, I'd done everything from health spas to limousine driving, limousine design. Mm. Uh, I met Peter uh, because we, we had common friends in our gaming group. So, so right. uh, I was introduced to Peter and all the other gang in, in Walla Walla, Washington. And so we were all in the same game groups. And then uh, eventually we all ended up migrating over to Seattle for professional reasons. Walla Walla is a nice town, but it's you know, yeah. fairly small. I'm just trying to remember, so. we played D, when did we first play D&D &D together? It would have been a Walla Walla, I assume. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Russ, yeah. Russ got Russ me. Woodall was yeah, our mutual got friend the who game. got and you then, into it. And from there he introduced me to, because I was brand new, mm. you know, these guys right. had been gamer for several years. And he just introduced me to the, so. So it was that way you and and uh, we played in Terra Garden and we played in, and then Caldea. Bobby created his campaign, which was our vacation <laughs> campaign. Uh, yeah, yeah. He struggled with that a bit. But so yeah, so we we grew up playing D and D together back yep. uh, back before Wizards was started, um, yeah. and uh, for all like you said, for all various reasons, we all ended up moving to Seattle. Yeah. Um, yeah. During the uh, and we're this is the eighties, uh, mm. late eighties. Yeah. And. Um, what did uh, what got you to move to Seattle? Uh, well, I was in the health spa business at the time, and I was working in a in a small facility in in Walla Walla. And uh, the gentleman who ran that facility had a lot of experience in the industry, and he was recruited by a, a large chain over here uh, in Linwood Family Fitness Centers. And he accepted the position. He accepted his own facility, but providing he could bring his own crew. So right. we all packed up the trucks and we all moved. We actually lived the first three weeks in the converted racquetball court. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, couldn't, we couldn't afford the, the upfront cost of getting an apartment. Was this around so, 88, 89, something uh, like that? Uh, 85? Just, yeah, okay. okay. All right, great. So, uh, um, so we started Wizards in 1990. You. You were not there at the, I mean, you're, you're so close to the beginning that I, yeah, I always right. think of yeah. you as like a, one of the original founders. I'm one of founders, the basement people. One of the but, basement days yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, so let's go to like, when did you hear that I had started a company? Well, I was roommates with Russ Woodall. We were living okay. in Redmond. Mm -hmm. And Russ, I gather, already had some degree of involvement. And, and he said, well, you know, Peter started this company and he recently just, you know, incorporated it and and uh, and you know it's games it's games it's role playing games well, you know what more do you right, want right so I yeah. said, sure I'm in you know, yeah so, we, I mean I knew Peter <laughs> right yeah because we was so, just known for Magic the Gathering but yeah. we didn't start yeah. with Magic the Gathering we started to do yeah, we started with role playing with we started with the coast we're going to do role playing games yeah. Yeah. yeah so so Russ uh, came down well. I took Russ down. I think I still think the reason he recruited me is because he didn't drive me in the <laughs> <other> car. <laughs> and we lived in Redmond, and you lived in Kent, yeah. in the apartment in, in right. the Kent. So Russ got me down there, and, and we we got involved. And uh, and Pete ended up having me do project management on a on a small project. It was my first one. I was testing the water, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and um, uh, apparently I, I did a good enough job. And so he gave me a couple more, and and then. And what was that first project? I think it was the. Uh, uh, it was an RPG supplement of because yeah, we didn't it, have magic was, yet. No, it was it was the Primal Order stuff. Yeah. Mm. And the first project 
I think the first projects I was working on were the 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 the, the bestiality. Oh, mm. bestiality. Uh, bestiary. bestiary. I think is the word you're looking for. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, this is the not eighth the... word you can't say yeah, on TV. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. The, the, yeah. the bestiary. Yeah. The bestiary. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, thank uh, thank yeah. you for that. Question. Well, I think that you worked on one of the. We had a, a line of RPGs supplements that we never came out with. Uh, right. I think mm. we started like the Compendium they, they were of like Bars. Little adventures. Of, yeah, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, and we didn't know what we were going to do. I think one of the things that we decided was that we weren't going to do our own RPG system. Mm -hmm. Right. That the focus right. of our RPG efforts was all going to be stuff that you could use with your with other your RPG of choice. Yeah, cap, right? si cap systems. Yeah. Right. Right. And so, uh, um, yeah, we started. Well, I remember one of the um, what I remember about this era mm -hmm. is just how dedicated you were to it. Mm. Like you were, well, you were, you wanted. I was an anal retentive. As well as <laughs> right. so, no, so. but you, you know, you. I were, was. I was. I was very proper, professional. Keep it all clean, mm. and it, it, you know. But you were a, ambitious. You, I, you remember what I did. you told me? I was me? ambitious. I, I, I came to Peter. You know, I, I don't mind saying I put a little pressure on Peter to give me an actual position. You know, mm. and it, he eventually made me vice president of research and development, which. Mm. I took it as a good sign, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I wanted you know, give me more projects, give me more projects. I, yeah, yeah. Well, I remember that. Um, I mean, I think uh, probably a lot of companies go through this in the early stages where, you know, you say, hey, we're starting a company, and everybody's, yeah, yeah, that sounds fun. I'm in, I'm in. People, yeah. but then there's kind of a shaking out as you figure out yeah. when people realize, oh, this is work. Yeah. And wait, I already have a job, and you're not paying me, right. uh, mm -hmm. or just paying me a pittance. Yeah. Um, there's there's you, you, there's some churn. There's some people that that mm -hmm. doesn't doesn't work for them, they, or they maybe they out. don't work for us, they or whatever out, yeah. it is. That and um, yeah. but you know, I I hope you know that like the conviction you had is something that's incredibly memorable for me, yeah. and is something that I treasure and treasured at the time. Especially there yeah. were times when I wasn't sure who I could count on, but I gotta say I always knew I could count on you. Well, I appreciate that. I, mean, I worked really hard at it. I <laughs> did. <laughs> you were. Uh, Peter, you know, Peter started this company. I wasn't there when he started the company. He started as a sole proprietorship and then he incorporated it. And I wasn't there for that little part. I came along, I want to say, in just a few July months. or September of 90, of 90, right? 90, it was just a few yeah. months into it. Um, had, he yeah, had just yeah. incorporated, but there, there were, you know, Kathy and Russ, and there were several other people already involved when I came along. And, uh, but. From the very first day, it was very clear to me that there was only one visionary in the group, and that was Peter. Everybody else, we all had great visions of what we thought we wanted things to be, but we didn't really have a vision of what the company was going to be, mm. and that we didn't have a vision of the direction we were going to go. It was kind of, and to us, I think it was kind of ambiguous. You know, it was like, oh, we're, we're going to make games, and we're, you know, we're going to do this, mm. we're going to do that. We didn't really. Peter always had. A mission in his head. Mm. He always, at least, mm. at least, if not, he BS'd us good enough to think <laughs> that he had a mission. But he, he always seemed to have, you know, tunnel vision of the direction he wanted us to go. So it was very easy for for most of us just just to kind of fall in line and follow in his wake and just you know try to do everything we could to get us there. Mm. And uh, and it turns out that that was a pretty successful strategy. Yeah. So. yeah, the vision from the beginning was to meet Richard Garfield someday. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, and, Peter told and, me at one time <laughs> that one of his biggest goals in this company was to make, and this is brilliant, was to make as many of his friends millionaires as possible. Mm. He wanted to make as many of his friends millionaires as possible. Mm. And uh, and he made a lot of his friends millionaires. So. Wow. He succeeded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks to Richard. <laughs> I think too. I, I can't, you know, it's like I can't, you know, accept too much of that compliment mm. without realizing that all of it would have just been a bunch of, um, you know, it, it took magic to gather to really make it a, a reality. Mm. Uh, well, but to be fair, okay, we would likely not have become that big and successful sticking strictly to role playing games. It's a, it's a very yeah, niche yeah. market. Mm. But when Richard did contact us, you, and 
Peter and I went, and I had completely forgotten we went to Portland until I, I read it in an article that you'd right. been interviewed. I'm like, oh, that's right, we went to Portland. Oh, crap, I don't even remember that. It's been 20 years. Mm. We went down there, and he presented Robo Rally, which I thought was a really cool game. But even at that point, with my limited experience, I understood that the cost of building that game out, the cost of having all those components built in different places you shipped to box, we weren't going to make it. But Peter set Richard on, on the road. Peter said, you know what I'd really like, and I don't remember all the criteria, but Peter said, I'd like something that is portable, it is socially interactive, it lends itself where to tournaments and conventions, and he had this list of criteria. Mm. And, and it was all Peter, uh, you know, my contribution all was, right, you know, right. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah this, you know, that was but, my contribution. But this show's all about you, Jay, so let's get... <laughs> well, we, we're getting to that part. Nice deflection. You uh, had me going there for a moment. <laughs> well, that's not too hard to do. Yeah, so, I know. So, I know. But anyway, he sent Richard off, and then the alpha version of, of Magic is what Richard came back with. Mm. Yeah. And, was... and so, from the other side of the coin, yeah, ma you know, Magic would never have been there without Richard and, and Scaff and the gang, you know, the, the mathematicians. You know, but the entire concept of having it would never have come into existence. Maybe not. Except Maybe for that meeting. Not. But to, so, to, and just to be clear, it was all Richard's. Richard invented the, had the epiphany oh yeah. moment, invented collectible card games. Thank mm. you. Let's, let's get back to okay. you, Jay. Uh -huh. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I want to hear your stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, but, um, uh, so before we get to Richard and, and before Magic, uh, mm -hmm. just a little bit more in, in that time of, of us working on role-playing games, because mm -hmm. of, there's not many people that I can get on the show talk about that that yeah. era. It's a pretty. It is kind there of a many special, of back special then. era. Mm. Like um, I was, uh, uh, man, we had some crazy times in those days. We did. I mean, working out of the basement of my house yeah. or the apartment even before the I had a house. First, the apartment first, then house. Mm. Uh, that diner we used to go to over there. Yeah, AC's Cafe. Yes, mm. AC's they Cafe. They had the best, super cheap sausage and biscuits. Sausage gravy with biscuit, oh, and we'd all one. like, you know, I got fifty cents, I got a buck, you know. Yeah. I'll go and buy a plate of this stuff. <laughs> Lisa Stevens, Ben, she would just shovel that. Oh, she loved it. It was good. Mm. You know, we used to go through all. We actually, if you look in in one of the Prime Lord, Prime Lord series, there, there's a dedication to AC hey. Cafe. Oh, yeah, 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 you know, <clears throat> in the in the Prime Order. Yes, yeah. it's yeah. not there That's anymore. The, I drove by when I moved back to. Yeah. From Texas, I drove by and it's not there yeah. anymore. Yeah. Yeah, too bad, but yeah, we used yeah. to love going up to that place. So yeah, what do you, uh, what, anything you remember from those days that you, you uh, any memories that you treasure from those earliest days oh, yeah. before, before we got sucked into the Magic the Gathering vortex? Mm. Well, you know, I was a gamer, loved gaming, hadn't been at it as, as long as you guys had. I'd been at it at that point three or four years, maybe tops, you know. Mm. But everybody I'd met in the in the game group were really fun guys. And I, I loved the game, uh, you know. And like some, I had my period, I think, where I obsessed on it a little bit. It's all I wanted to talk about. Blah, blah, blah. Mm. You like any new gamer, you know. Yeah. This yeah. time at band camp, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but but we, we got through that. But um, we, we weren't gaming as much when I moved to over to Western Washington, you know, we're, we're all dispersed. He's a Boeing. I'm, a, you know, when Russ is somewhere else, and I don't know where Daryl went and yeah. Steve. Everybody's gone. Mm. CJ. Uh, so, so we weren't, weren't really hanging out or associating or anything, you know. And except Russ and I were, you know, keeping in touch. And so Russ, Russ kind of got back, got me back into it. Once got back into it, then the whole, oh, how much I love gaming things comes rushing back, and the chance to actually design something, in, in you know put your own spin on a game that's going to be published is, yeah. you know, it's, that's a very alluring thing you want to you know you want to do that and um uh i don't have a lot of recollections of the of the apartment because we weren't there that long i right. don't think right. and and we had you know peter and kathy each had a computer i don't even have a computer <laughs> and <laughs> they were the old uh, they weren't quite 356k but they were yeah. you know they were i remember when we in, in the basement of the house we got our first company computer brand new computer it was mm. a mac classic four mega ram 40 mega hard drive <laughs> state-of-the-art <laughs> bank brand new. Yeah. i did a little teen gray thing yeah, it was aol on it yeah it was about <laughs> the size of a steering wheel yeah I think. It was a little teeny thing and we're all like yeah, yeah we gotta get up. And we got on AOL. Oh, email, you know. And then and then they got us these uh, these these old modems. Mine was like 
<laughs> 600 baht or something. Mm. And we put it on a dumb terminal in the apartment. Russ and I had a dumb terminal. And, and all we could do is basically... Just text messages we, back and forth. We didn't have internet or anything. But then we got that AOL account and everybody got an AOL. So we had an email, email address. We were actually a person now. Mm. And... Uh, <laughs> And, and then the computer just so, got bigger and bigger and stronger. Well, I, and more okay, I, I got to throw in a technology thing. Yeah. I remember, and I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was you, it had to have been you, who <laughs> got a, the office pager system. Did you, so now, just to, expl the, the, just to explain to all the youngins what's uh, going on here, before yeah. cell phones, mm -hmm. uh, there was a period where people had pagers. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it was it was uh, just the, the step before cell phones. Yeah. It was a little it was just device. after the rock clacking communication yeah, method. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And quite. what you could do is your pager had a number. You couldn't call people, but you could call the pager mm. and put in your phone number mm. in a dial. And and then the person with the pager you open it up and they'd see who the number of whoever had called him. If you knew the number, you'd call him back maybe mm -hmm. or whatever you'd, at your leisure, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm. Well, you got us this fancy one in the office. Maybe oh, it was Lisa. The, the big and it was a big, big console screen. where all of these pagers could be yeah. stored. Oh. And it had a, a keypad, keyboard. Uh -huh. A little tiny little keyboard about that big. Yeah. And you could send a message to somebody's pager. Mm -hmm. Ooh, and that nice. was that was Fancy. cool technique. <laughs> but the funny thing with this, though, there's I'm leading up to a oh, good no. story, <laughs> uh, a good yes for story, mm. is so we got this thing. And, I'm pretty sure you, you were kind of insisting everybody wear a pager, like, oh. Well, people, we were nine sheets to the wind. We each had different jobs, lived in different towns. Mm. I mean, there was no yeah. way to get a hold of anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm a, like, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. You, had to be you some were probably operations by that point in time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. More or less, yeah. yeah. And so we got this thing so you could send messages. So we're all having a, a staff meeting one day in, in basement of my house in the living room part. There's about eight of us were sitting around day, and Jay gets this page, you know, and he looks at the page. And it says you're sitting in ink, and <laughs> I forgot. <What? laughs> and Jay, 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 Jay looks at this kind of dumbfounded, like, huh? I don't know. What, what, what do you mean? He puts it back on. Well, what Jesper had done is Jesper had gone into the machine, typed out on the pager, and sent it to Jay as a page. But there was a lag time. So yeah. by, the time Jay, by the time Jay got the page, Jesper had come back, sat down in the meeting. We're all having a meeting. A couple of minutes go by, and then he gets, and then. So then, a few minutes later, after he gets this page, a few minutes later, Jesper gets up and leaves and <laughs> comes back. You didn't know, notice. <laughs> it, 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 a couple minutes later, sure enough. No, really, you're sitting in ink. And then, then Jay <laughs> gets up, yeah, I'm, 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 <laughs> looks, the hell looks, you know? looks around, and then, of course, Jesper couldn't hold it in anymore at that point. Jesper just started laughing, and we all figured out the joke. And, Actually, and then that, that became like the office yeah, joke Jesper all the time. Got, Jesper would get me with these little things regularly. Yeah, do you still go by Rapmaster Hayes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was with Jesper and his, and his, his iconic names. Peter actually got me the best. I'm trying to remember So now what everybody birthday. was doing it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, no, no. Peter really got me. Mm. He comes to me one day and he says, okay, we're going to meet with some representatives from a company in Burma that wants to market magic. And I'm like, Burma? Burma? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Burma? <laughs> and he's going, yeah, we're going to meet him. There's a room at the hotel. We're going to go. We're going to have the conference. And it was my birthday. Oh. Uh, he takes me into this meeting with all these Burmese tycoons. <laughs> <laughs> Half the staff is in there. My girlfriend's in there. Happy birthday. And I just started oh. looking at Peter. I was like, Burma? <laughs> really? Burma? <laughs> The, ex the new, yeah. <laughs> I was actually somewhat relieved that it was my birthday and I wasn't actually going to have to go to Burma. Right. <laughs> I mean, I'd uh, forgotten about that. <laughs> he had me like, you know. It was funny. And then what was the one where Jesper, you, you dropped a name and Jesper thought you said Tofu Gigolo. Oh, yeah. No, well, what is it? I've, always, I've never had really good hearing. Mm. I have a high frequency hearing loss. So that's where mm. the consonants are. So frequently people would say something to me and I would hear something entirely different. Mm -hmm. But my way of finding out was to repeat back what I heard. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesper said something, I don't know what he said. And I said, Tofu Gigolo. <laughs> and, and from that time on, it was I was Tofu Gigolo <laughs> until he came up with Rap Master J and then some other things that he had going on there. <laughs> we had that little board on the wall in the basement and he had a saying of the day.
day thing with the little white letters. Right. You ever used to oh, put those on there? Yeah. He'd put the weirdest crap up there, man. <laughs> yeah. He was, yeah. Okay, so um, never uh, a dull moment. So we uh, so let's let's get up to the uh, the magic days, okay. uh, magic gathering. So when um, so you I had forgotten you were on that you were on the Portland trip with me when we met Richard yeah. mm. and looked at Robert Alley. I had uh, well, I, I was the vice president of research and development, yeah. so it was very yes, important that I be right. at the suspicious that's right. event. That's right. Yeah. yeah well. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, yeah, so, okay, well, I was going to ask uh, if you remember when you met Richard, that would have been well, the that time. That was the first time. Yeah. So what do you, what was your impressions of Richard from that? I didn't quite know what to think when I came out. You speak to him, and, and he, he kind of left me feeling he was a little scatterbrained. Yeah. Mm. But you could also tell by his description of things and his passion for his game that there was a level of, he had a depth yeah. When it came to to that kind of thing, and and I very quickly figured out he had a level of depth much greater than mine, and all of us. Uh, yeah. mm. And um, when when the alpha playtest version came out for Magic, uh, I looked at it, and to me, it was a game, and I was probably one of the slower of the group. Peter picked up on it first. Lisa picked up on it because she was very experienced in the game. And Peter had a lot of strategic wargaming experience, mm -hmm. yeah. and I didn't. And so we start playing, and Peter's just clocking us. <laughs> I mean, he is just kicking our ass. Uh -huh. and e so, Emma knows how that feels, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I got yeah. beat by Peter. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> she was very we all get to together in the spirit of team <laughs> dynamics and decide we're going to take the logical approach. We're going to cheat. So we go in the other room and we're changing. Okay, give me all your reds. Okay, give me all your blues, you know. And we're building these customized decks. Okay, yeah. Right? So that we can try to beat Peter. Yeah. And, and we started winning. Well, Peter's not stupid. He knows everybody suddenly showed up with grotesquely lopsided desks. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know? So the whole collectability thing didn't set in on me until I think everybody else had already gotten it. Okay. And at that point, we all became ravenous, and it was people were trading constantly around the even with the the, the little card. But board. it's so funny. Lexi, yeah. you know, it, Spock, the well, righteous it, card was Spock doing this. It was a, a <laughs> miniograph <laughs> clip art, you know. Yeah, that was yeah. the original playtest card for <coughs> yeah, Magic the Gathering. Construction paper with yeah. mimeograph clip art was all it was. Yeah. And uh, but I mean, you got sucked into the game we, so quick, and at that point, I, I started thinking, Oh my God, Richard is brilliant. Mm. I mean, this is brilliant. And it's, it's so running. funny that you referred to it as cheating that you guys are doing, which is actually what right, well, which is kind of the whole point. We the kind of point. thought of it as cheating because <laughs> we hadn't actually discussed the, the strategy involved in the right. game, mm -hmm. and yeah. we were just sick of getting our butts kicked. So mm -hmm. we just all scooted off and you know stacked our decks <laughs> stacked and came back. Deck. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Uh, well, because at the time, that's how games were. Like, it came in the package that it right. came in. I mean, that, in, that, that you was your what game. You got, I mean, you right. Know, right. So right. this idea of combining it together, I could see that it is. It feels yeah, like cheating. I don't think you ever told me that. Like, I don't, I think that mm. would have stuck in my mind. There's, I like, like you, we've talked about how much we've forgotten. We've yeah. forgotten oh, 95, yeah, yeah. Per, if, at least percent. Mm. I mean, it's hard to know because you can't, like, yeah, make I the list of what you forgot. Remember right? how much I've but, forgotten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it's, um, it's, that's, um, I don't know. I just find that kind of interesting that, that there was a moment there where you thought that that it was cheating to uh, to do exactly what Richard designed the game to do, which was well, that people would trade cards. You remember how it was know? at that yeah. time? It was very rigid and structured and in a yeah. box. Yeah. And this was my game. It came in my box. Yeah. So this is my deck. And Peter got his deck. <laughs> yeah. Lisa has her deck. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, but I can just see you and Jesper and Lisa like, okay, you take all the red cards. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah. take all the blue cards. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just, that, that, that's just kind of a funny, uh, uh, yeah, Richard, um, but he, but by the way, Emma got to meet Richard was here at our <gasps> yeah, show uh, a couple cool. weeks, a couple yeah. weeks ago. And, and he is, um, I was, I was reminded of, of like, what you're saying is like he had he has such a depth to him it was just such a pleasure he, to talk he, to him. i haven't he, talked to him that much out there you know. i mean he you know you could tell he was not a uh, an in the now guy mm. you know it's classically you know richard never wore a pair of matching socks ever he always had mismatched socks he'd go mm. to the drawer he'd pull out two socks and he'd put them on he didn't mm. care if they were black and purple he didn't care he, just, he lived very in the moment and he would get you know you could see 
the gear was were always turning in Richard's head. Even when you're talking to him about one thing, you, you kind of got the feeling that part of him was off somewhere else mm. working on something, you know. And uh, and I always admired that, but it was always a little spooky, actually. I, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the things I have fond memories too is like on board meetings at, at board meetings. Once <laughs> Richard, uh, yeah. once Richard was part of Wizards of Coast, and mm. we. Uh, uh, brought everybody together, uh, uh, mar the merger with Garfield Games, and um, uh, he, we would have a board meetings where he wouldn't say anything for like the entire board meeting until like at some point there'd be uh, like well a, a, a point where we'd say well Richard what do you think of this big strategic question that we'd been debating for like maybe an hour <laughs> and Richard Richard would think about it for a moment you know, Richard wasn't you know he's not someone who's afraid of silence. You know, like he doesn't have the need to fill the air with saying a bunch of stuff. And so he would just think for a few seconds and then he'd say something that just clarified the whole question. It was brilliant. It would just bring us out of this moment of and you'd have, you know, everybody around the table including from lawyers to like sophisticated business people like Arnie Prentice yeah. um, on the board and stuff. And everybody just kind of look at Richard and say, well, I think that. Well, all right, Richard. I think that pretty much settles the question, <laughs> doesn't it? Everybody, yeah. we're all going, yeah. You make it very much in a nutshell com yeah, yeah, comment, yeah. And, and yeah. just you know, yeah. So, um, and he hated the bureaucracy too. No, he didn't like it. He, didn't he had like, to like uh, practically beat the hell out of him to get him to become the vice president of R and D. Mm. All Richard wanted to do was design games. He, he didn't want to have to. He didn't want all that administrative and political crap. He didn't want to, well, he did. he didn't want to design we did, games. We didn't put him on the org chart. <laughs> yeah. we, the company org chart did not have Richard on it. Hmm. Everybody just knew Richard could just, he, he had Richard no door policy. Richard pretty much what Richard just, wanted. Just go in was, to any meeting. If you meeting. just let him go, he, all sorts of great stuff came out. If you tried to steer him, he'd get he'd get frustrated. Hmm. And, 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 you know, Peter said, so, oh, okay, just let him go. He's just going to give us yeah, good stuff. Yeah. You know? Well, and he's the <laughs> largest shareholder, so, you know, like, well, what yeah. he wants yeah. to do. You can only steer so, so much. So, when, um, I'm trying to remember, when did you go to Belgium? Because I want to... It, it was January 15th, 1994. 94, so pretty yeah. early on. I'm just wondering yeah. if there's anything else we should cover before you went to Belgium. Because that's a big... Well, a big we, thing. Th there In was. In case you haven't figured out, guys, he's going to Belgium. <laughs> Spoilers. We, <laughs> Spoiler alert. We had, we had moved from the house to our first actual facility. Yeah. It was and over this on is, Powell Avenue in, in Renton. And this is in and 90, early it was in 93. 93. Magic the Gathering's release. Just, yeah. It had yeah. just yeah. been release released. Magic, so that's when, yeah. when the yeah. first yeah. Magic we, shipment came, it came to actually to Peter's house, and we converted his garage into a warehouse. Mm. And when it, it was fun. Actually, we, when we... We had already done that with Primal Order oh, well, in Talislana. Yeah. So when the first Magic shipment came out, yeah. came, our warehouse was full of mm -hmm. role playing products, and we left all the Magic the Gathering product on out the on the lawn, lawn oh, overnight. Oh my gosh. The first yeah. night. <laughs> Thank God it didn't rain. Oh my God! But it's but Seattle. it was funny too because what were the odds? Because <laughs> you know we we figured. Correct me if the numbers are wrong, but we had figured that this this was a 1.6 million. <laughs> I don't the first, remember. The first day out, it was like 1.6 million. And That's we thought, about right. Okay, though. we got about six six months worth of sales here. You know. Mm. You know. Yeah. It took off. It it didn't take off immediately, but it took off. Well, we it, had to the get the ramp we, was very up. You know, we had to get to Gen Con. Yeah. yeah. Once we got to Gen Con, we had a booth, and people started playing man sales. That, you know, people we had distributors calling and ordering a pack. Before you know, that, the before, oh. yeah, yeah, the first before Gen Con, yeah. and then yeah. after that, they're calling and they're ordering. You know, these astronomical. You know, we don't have them. Yeah. You yeah. know, and so and we had to wait get paid for the 1.6 million before we could order the 7.4 million. They're being printed in Belgium. Yeah. Well. Mm, right. Right. Peter and and I don't know if Jesper was involved in, but I wasn't really involved in the decision. But but there was a group that's saying like, okay, we don't want these printed. If we go to Flair or Tops or Upper Deck or any of these guys, all our algorithms are going to be out the back door. Mm. So yeah. they decided on. Uh, Carta Monday. You and yes, yes, whoever's doing art and production at the time. They decided on Carta Monday, which I, for the first uh, month, there, kept There's a whole story calling, around that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We I mistakenly, Monday. for the first month, yeah. kept calling it Magna Carta. And Lisa, <laughs> and Lisa, Lisa kept, no. <laughs> No. Yeah. So, so now you got me thinking. It. I had to think about what it was. Uh, so um, at this time, we moved into the first office. We had 10,200 square feet, and it was exactly half of a building. And I had a, I had a rolling option. So I had an option on the back half. Mm. And I had options, first, first right of refusal on every bit 
of space in the park. Mm. Well, and, and I think it's fair to say by this time, by the time Richard joined the company, mm -hmm. you, you, we, we, we replaced you as yeah, <laughs> head, head of R&D. Uh, yeah, people which, always ask me, they said, oh, you were the head of research and development? Do you develop magic? And I said, well, <laughs> I developed our role-playing games and Richard told me what he wanted. <laughs> said, my, my oversight in magic was pretty much limited to controlling what I was going to trade from my <laughs> from my deck. But you were, you were said, watching schedules but, and stuff. But I, I did not all the other stuff, yeah. you know, but I said, no. But a lot of it's project management. Yeah. Yeah. It's a like lot figuring of it's project out management, what, what, scheduling. Who's, who's a lot doing of these what? Sources. It's yeah. really important yeah. stuff. Like, uh, that's like, who's going to do what and when's it going to be done by? And mm. they got to know yeah. that and everything's got to come and, together. And, and I was, I was, yeah. I was fairly competent and I was very comfortable with it. And but, by that time, but, we got in a computer where we had some software and I could actually make some graph charts and, and, and send everybody mm. a schedule to where, okay, you know, this is our production time, this is our art time. Well, once our... he knew he could make charts, he was... <laughs> oh, yeah, man, I was very good. Once I could make charts, I was golden, man. Yeah. I was on a roll. Yeah. Uh, so we got in this 10,000, and I mean, the ink hadn't even, the paint hadn't even dried on the wall before the, the, the bullpen area that we had was already filling up. We exercised the option on the other half of the mm. building. And I had just got that build out and we had a, a meeting and I don't remember which meeting it was. We had the Hasbro meeting where they made an offer and we sat up half the night discussing whether we were gonna sell out to Hasbro <laughs> for $30 million. And we finally decided no. Oh. And, and then there was the, the, the meeting on opening a foreign office. And we were sitting in, in our meet room. It was right by the, the front of the building there. And we sat and we talked. Okay, well, you know, somebody's going to have to go and do this and this and that and the other. Well, you know, Peter's married. Lisa's in a, you know, not, she's not going. In there. You know, we're going around. I'm the only person who's not married, has nothing keeping me here, and had some kind of management or well, business you, you background. You had just demonstrated mm. that by doing yeah. the lease on the... By, yeah, you, I'd done the lease on the bill You had worked into and, managing, really being an operations manager right. by then. I yeah. mean, you were and you were so, taking care of all of uh, Well, I, I our really office. was the most qualified in terms of of handling licensing and real estate and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff all together. All the stuff you need, yeah. So, so Peter said, okay, well, you know, if you go over there, get it all set up, you know, set your budget, set your timeline, get over to set it up, and then come back. And I said, well, okay, as long as I get to keep my departments here because I don't want to, I don't want to lose all my departments. I had like eight departments and mm. I don't want to lose all these, you know, while I'm over there. So, so you know, I was agreed. So, uh, so I fly over to Belgium. And I remember I'm on the plane, I'm flying to Belgium. I'm picturing low rolling green hills and trees and ox carts. <laughs> and, and, uh, and not not realizing I'm sitting on a freaking you know wide body jumbo jet. Where the hell's it gonna land? Right. right? right. So we laugh at Zobbinton, and I think, oh, this is modern. <laughs> you know. Oh, Later, I, I, I think, God, how stupid can you be, Jay? <laughs> you almost think that somebody, an archer, was gonna shoot at me with the concession stand. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, so so I drove gosh. out to Magna Carta, right? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and uh, uh, I found an office. Uh, well, at first I, I went and hired the attorney. We got the the company incorporated and shuttled back all the paperwork and created the the bank accounts. You had to bank over there. Everything was a little bit different. You don't write checks. You don't use credit cards. You do direct bank to business transfers. Hmm. So when you when I went to bought all the office uh, furniture and all that kind of stuff, you actually sign paperwork that authorizes a bank transfer and hmm. and they do. Mm -hmm. And uh, we set up the electronics suite. Uh, it was a nice place. It was on the was what we called the third floor over there. It's the second floor because the first floor is ground is level zero in mm. Europe. It's one here, and we set it up. We got the suite. We got the uh, the staff hired, and as it turns out, the Richard's sister was over there, and uh, Elizabeth married, from yeah right Elizabeth. Elizabeth or it might have been Garfield at the time. I don't know if her. No, they were married. Yeah, they were married. so so it would have been room, and and Herman and and <coughs> they were both really sharp. I expected his sister would be sharp. Mm. But it turns out Hermon was quite sharp as well. And um, so we took them in and and kind of groomed them over the course of that year to be the managing directors. And we went out and hired uh, staff, found some really cool and, people. So, so let's back up for a second. What, um, um, what did this office, why did we set up an office in Belgium? Well, we needed somebody to be on top of Carta Monday, but we also needed someone to be able to liaison with our European distributors. We were mm. picking up distributors left and right. We didn't know much about these people. We were, 
you know, a lot of our success was because people snickered at us because we'd never be successful in this business. And we were naive enough not to believe them. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. You know, we were like, they don't know us. We can, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so, but then this thing takes off and now we're like, we're like riding the bull, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, uh, and we're worried about our background being enough for us to keep on top of it. And mm. at some point we had to go out and start, you know, recruiting some expertise because the company had, to some degree, had outgrown a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, then we started getting nervous about all the things that could go wrong. Cause now, you know, first we was just surviving. Now it's successful now, like, holy oh, crap, what can go wrong? And, and I, I think the, 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 we realized we had to have a customer service element mm. for the product that spoke native languages. We weren't gonna be able to do that out of Seattle and, mm. and not without running them at really weird hours or something. Uh, we needed somebody who could go actually work with the dis distributors. And we had a lot of conventions over there that were big over there and we needed someone to be able to coordinate all that and to coordinate the travel. Mm. And, and then we had acquired uh, Nightfall Games uh, out of the UK and um you know they followed the, the traditional route they they covered the united kingdom and south africa which we didn't distribute into south africa but um so i actually spent uh, out of the month i spent a, a week in seattle and a half oh, about a half a week maybe four days in in our paisley office and then the rest i was in belgium mm. and a half a time in belgium i was out going to distributors and uh so now let's see. It was a remember, weird year. Do you, <laughs> uh, do you remember who any of those distributors were? Like Amigo, were they on board yet? No, I don't think they were. I think mm -hmm. John brought them on later, I think. Um, we had, Giovanni uh, was with us. Giovanni Angelis was mm. yeah. Stradalibri. Yeah, was Stradalibri in Italy. In Italy. Yep. Um, Michael Brunsma. You might remember. I don't 999 know, Games. Out of, 999 Games, yeah. sure. Mm. Yeah, I'm still good friends with Michael. Yeah, 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 yeah I get his... Interesting artwork he sends out every <laughs> once in a while. He said these cartoony things are really mm. cool. I know you might not know this, uh, but Stradalibri, um, you remember Giovanni mm. Angelis died a number, right, of, number right. of years ago. I felt um, bad about that. I, liked, uh, I really a, liked Giovanni. Um, uh, oh, I'm going to embarrass myself because I can't remember his name, but there was a guy that worked for uh, Giovanni who uh, resurrected Stradalibri. Silvio? Silvio, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah Stradalibri is, uh, is, uh, is a major company in the tabletop game space now out of really? Italy. And uh, it was... Uh, cool. Yeah, it was There's the Silvio guy that, and Luigi. Yeah. Mm. Used, uh, for the two. Yeah, mm. yeah. Uh, one of those gentlemen um, uh, resurrected Stradalibri. Mm. And, and That's funny. Like, they, they came over here uh, not long before we released uh, uh, Legend, mm. I think it was the first Italian. Was uh, yeah, so they, uh, so they got in on uh, Legends was the first uh, Italian. The first uh, foreign language. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Italian. I think it was like, it was definitely the very first uh, foreign language um, mm -hmm. edition of any magic set was right. Italian and it was with Stradalibri. Mm. And Good. I think, it, I don't remember if it was Legends or a core set, but uh, mm. Legends was the expansion that they jumped in, in yeah. on. And, and that was very yeah. early too. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it was, was. Uh, it was summer 95. After, yeah. 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 It, it, and Giovanni was funny because he would call, he would call all the time. He so didn't want to keep calling Peter. <laughs> and so he'd call me all the time. Oh, because we were running uh, 10 million cards, I think was the run. Yeah, I remember. And he would call you like, Sounds oh, right. what am I going to do? If nobody buys these cards, it's going to break my company. Oh, my God. You know, and he called me back four days later. They sold so fast, I'm not going to have enough cards. What am I going to do? You know, and it was like every week he would call me. We were stressed out over something. Oh, my God, you know. And I'm just like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Can I talk to Luigi? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Luigi, take him out for an espresso. Got, you know. yeah, 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 come so, back on the espresso. Mm. I mean, yeah, he just had the, the Peter and I went one time, we went down there, mm. and I tried to find the restaurant that he took us to with the, the five at a time oh. pastas. Oh my God, I forgot about that place, the spaghetteria. Yeah. I told my there's kids a, about it. There's a place in Milan. Oh, oh my God, yeah. it was a, a spaghetteria. There's like 80 different and kinds of pasta and they serve them five at a time in little teeny portions. You mm. just, you didn't order. You yeah. just sat down like a tasting menu, you. but it's only spaghetti. Yeah. And yeah. they had 80 types about, I don't know if it's literally like 80, yeah. but it's like 80 different kinds of spaghetti, something like that. And you would just sit down and, and not long after you sat down, they would just bring you, start bringing start you spaghetti, bringing it, and and you just whatever the next one was on the rotation, yep. and a little it. a little <laughs> bowl. And I remember Giovanni looking at us, stopping us at about um, at, at the sixth bowl. He uh -huh. says, "Okay, now we have a very important decision to make. The pricing here is in sets of six. So mm. if you want to keep going, you'll get six more. 
And we all agreed, well, yes, of course, let's keep going. And then, there weren't and then really big after, portions. Yeah, and then after the 12th spaghetti, <laughs> yeah. then it was a more difficult decision. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. And it was kind of a rundown place. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like really a fancy, fancy it wasn't right? a fancy yeah. place. And I remember going back there like a year later, I, I wanted to go back to the spaghetti Ria, and they were all like, uh, you know, everybody's making a lot more money then, and they're like, well, we we're going to take you to a nice place. Like, no, I want to go back to that yeah. spaghetti Ria. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the sausage me? and polenta? Yes. They had uh, the best sausage and polenta. Oh. Oh. I, yeah, I could have made a meal I, out of their sausage and polenta. I, was, mm. I would love I to find out of that. that Giovanni is, is at, you know, he's talking wine because, you know, you're Italian, there's pasta, so there's got to be wine, mm -hmm. right? Peter, you know, drinks wine and knows something about wine. I don't know, you know. I order milk, mm. <laughs> my favorite drink. <laughs> <laughs> the waiter. The waiter, Our he, producer, Derry Gooder, is giving the thumbs up yeah. on that. So, okay, I, I up, you've, you've made a point with dairy. Derek. I lived on a dairy. I, I still do this day. Ask my son. I, I, I drink a ton of milk. Mm. His son's shaking his head. Yeah. His <laughs> eyes roll and, he, oh, you know, you can hear it. You know, it's a baby's drink, you know. And, and, <laughs> like, can I have a Coke? And, Fine, I'll see what they can find. You know, he goes, well, I, and I had Coke and, and they had wine and I felt like, the third wheel through the uh -huh. whole meal because they're all like sipping their wine and you know and eating the pasta and I'm well just, i was like, faking i didn't know shit about wine back in those days <laughs> but you know yeah it was, like, oh, yeah. was I, funny i was a fa <laughs> I, was, I was learning though was he was funny. learning i was learning we, we went to to to, to, to what was it? it was a awards banquet gamma okay mm. in, in, i don't know what story it is so yeah, i can't weigh in yet on which banquet and, it was. and he takes us all to this really nice restaurant in the french quarter it was a beautiful place oh now i know what story yeah. it is and they bring out this wine <laughs> list and, it, and you can see peter's eyes just glass over he has no idea what any of this was. none of us did uh. you know and so you know he, he's conferring with a few people and anyway they pick a bottle of wine the guy brings the wine he stops the wine he hands it, and you can see him yeah you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> Looks good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, know. You know. I didn't right. gag. Like, <laughs> and, and like none of us knew if this was good wine or not. I wasn't going to drink any of this shit anyway, so I didn't care. <laughs> it, but it was a fabulous meal, but it was like ridiculously expensive. I remember that it was, was like um, 80, 100 bucks a head. This is back in like 95 or something. Oh, wow. like. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, but I'll never forget going there. It was a really, that was really, a nice, really a it was cool. memorable. Yeah, that was a, we did, um, uh, we were making enough money that we really wanted to do something nice for our distributors. And so mm. at that Gamma trade show, which I believe was in 94, maybe 95, because um, uh, we did, um, we took all of our major distributors, each, each night we took one of our mm. distributors okay. out and we was the less bare no expense. We want to show these guys <laughs> a really good time. About and, it than I did. And, uh, yeah. and I remember the good food. Uh, well, and I, re I remember <laughs> one of them had a dessert brandy coffee thing where they peeled an orange the right. guy did it right in front of us he, he yeah, peeled yeah. an orange that was brilliant. in one long continuous yeah. drip yeah. Mm -hmm. and then uh and put pour, cloves in pour it. brandy mm. down it yeah and then brandy would come down this and it would the way he did it would go like a cycle like this down into the cup and then he light it on fire and, it would, and then the fire would go down and then something happened after i don't remember whatever right. but that, the fire was yeah. the important the part was, of it, it was right? really yeah. a cool it was, spectacle yeah. it was really i remember cool. that. I and i was like that. wow i'm not I'd idaho all anymore about that until you mentioned it <laughs> wow that's a long time ago okay so i go back to going back to belgium mm -hmm. like i don't know that just must have been really cool I, I mean, really liked it. Bel Belgium I mean, is a wonderful country. Going to a, a, another country, as young mm. as we were and as mm. just Anglo as we were, like to yeah. go to a country and set up an office for a, a new company that's hot and growing. Mm. It was a lot of fun. Um, thankfully, uh, English was fairly widely spoken mm. uh, in, in Flanders. In northern Belgium, English is almost a second language. They speak Flemish, which is basically Dutch. They, they, they like to think it's their own language, but it's really Jay, 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 Jay. So if you go south it, it of that. It is their own language. It's okay. If you go south of that, then it's, it's French. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and they're really snobby to each other. I mean, the northern Belgian yeah. people don't even want to do business with the southern Belgian. I mean, they're really, you know. But, uh, but anyway. <laughs> I had this conversation with... Yeah, with, politically with, correct as always, yeah. yeah. yeah okay, well, anyway. Um, um, so, meanwhile, I was uh, changing the topic the other day and thinking... <laughs> <laughs> I have to use that line a lot. No, okay. but, but English was widely spoken, which made it a lot easier. Mm. Uh, and, and then right away... I'm trying to remember his name. The Lonely Mountain. Uh, 
The Lonely Mountain. Yeah, it was a retail store in Antwerp, The Lonely Mountain. He became, oh. he kept wanting to become a distributor. And then the, I don't remember. there was some Peter. That's why I had you and John, so I didn't uh, have. Well, yeah. the thing was, anyway, the store, The Lonely yeah. Mountain that he yeah. had there. It was a place I could go where someone who was in the gaming business, who spoke English, who knew everybody in Europe. Right. Mm. Right. And, and I kind of got to tap into him mm. to get a lot of information. And I just had to filter through all of the lobbying that he was doing, as we were, you know, because he wanted to figure, oh, you know, I got to go. Oh, you know, uh, now I know who you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah, so I he was constantly trying either. to, you know, get an in and use it for, so, which, you know, I would pretty good at fending that off because I couldn't promise him something he didn't qualify for. So, mm. but, um, but, and then I would fly back to Seattle one week out of the month. And then we had our, our board meetings and, and you were on the board and I was on the board at the time. And I never seem to remember, I don't remember where, I think it was in London. It was in the middle of the night. We had a board meeting. And I fell asleep on the phone or something. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and they razzed yeah. me for weeks. Yeah. Apparently, Jay's we, contribution was. You were working hard we're like over there. Four o'clock in the morning. You know, you I'm on a hotel bed. I'm a, uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> you, you know, you were our man in Belgium. Finally, you they were, just hung up on me. You yeah. know, yeah. yeah. Jay fell asleep. Yeah. But, um, but, but I mean, I racked up like. 700,000 frequent flyer miles that year. Wow. I mean, I was just flying everywhere. All right. So I, I just remember this, a, a fun story. And it's, it's good. For a moment, you're not going to, like, why is this about Jay? But at the ending is why. So um, I remember there's these two guys. I can't remember their name. And that's probably good because I, we didn't like these guys at all. <laughs> <laughs> these two guys, uh, they, were, they, were, they were older than us. Mm -hmm. And they came and and real professional guys. So they, they came down and asked for a meeting uh, with me and you were in the meeting as VP of research and development. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, so it might've been before Belgium. And um, they came in and they were, they were dressed up, really professional looking guys, mm. right? And uh, they came in and they told us about how they were gonna become the experts at trading card games at designing and developing trading card games. And they wanted us to make, to be sure we knew who these guys were. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they, we, they wanted us to know who they were because they were gonna become the experts at trading card games and were gonna design our games for us. And <clears throat> we're sitting there looking, and this whole meeting, mm -hmm. you're like this, from the, from the <laughs> get-go. Like, even before you've heard their pitch, mm -hmm. you were just mm -hmm. looking at them, you were giving them, uh. I'm like, I'm like what the hell's up with Jay? I didn't yeah, like I, him. I, I, yeah, yeah, they were yeah, just yeah, arrogant yeah, putzes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I, I, yeah, I'm leading up to what you said, so oh. don't, don't try and, mm. yeah, let, let me do this. So, okay. so, <laughs> so we go through this, and eventually I started not like him, like, like coming into our office, you know, and like, and eventually I said, well, you know, we created the category, and Richard Garfield invented Magic the Gathering. I think we kind of like to think of ourselves as the. <laughs> experts on uh, yeah. trading card games yeah. you know and somehow i don't remember what else was said but i remember saying that and we were after being and they left and and i'm like can you imagine the gall of these guys I, i'm like imagine the gall of these come into our office and 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 be uh you know and, and say they're going to be the experts on trading card games and i looked at you like but you didn't like them from the very first what what was it and you said he came into our office and wore a red tie. Oh, the power tie. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's Wait, right. I remember, I, I remember that now. And I'm like, there you were three colors of tie you did not wear into my office unless you outranked me in the company. You didn't wear royal blue. You didn't wear red. And you didn't I, wear, I kind of went along tie. with it at the time, but later yeah. I'm like, what the deal's about the red tie? Like huh. I didn't like I like you were so mad at oh, them. That you was were, arrogant, he came man. into our office and wore a red tie. Yep. And I'm like, what the heck's that mean? What, so Maybe he didn't know tie language. I was upset I at know. them because they were coming in and telling us that they were going to know more about trading card games than we did. <laughs> well, <laughs> t to me, the tie was like the cape. Yeah. You know, yeah. waving the cape in front of the ball, and and and, <laughs> and it just confirmed how incredibly <laughs> arrogant this putz was that he would wear a red tie in Wait, my office. Wait, what was the third color? Just, huh? What was it? There was red, royal blue. What was the third color? Um, certain shades of emerald or royal purple. They're considered depending on what type of suit you were. Back then there was a series of books out called Dress for Success and it would oh. break it down geographically and all this. Interesting. Stuff. And, and <laughs> it, well, even to this day in, in, yeah. in the business world, 
it's a language all of its own. Mm. You know, your, your kerchief, the color of your tie, the stripes of your suit, all of it I is a language I think it's more it's the own. cut of your blue and jeans now, <laughs> Jay. I, I, well, it depends on which circle. Yeah, that's, yeah. But anyway, at that, at that time, <laughs> you know, I had been a, a limousine chauffeur and driver right, for right. a number of years. Yeah. I wore, you know, custom-made suits and everything, and was very much about appropriateness. Yeah. And it just triggered me off that this putz walked into my office with a red tie. I mean, it's just, and that's pretty you much, don't do that, not a red tie. This, you know. this story tells you more about Jay than the entire rest of the, yeah. <laughs> of the interview. Probably. Yeah. I was pretty pucker butted at that I time. Just, yeah. I just didn't, at the time, I just, when you said that, I'm just like, Okay, that means something. I don't know what it there. means. Uh, <laughs> then later, yeah, but what? it lined up with the rest of the story, right? They were I, it coming did. in. Yeah, they were yeah, arrogant it, punches. It, 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 I knew yeah. they were arrogant punches, and then I saw their damn red tie. That's why, that's why me, I didn't like them. Took me half a meeting to figure it out. So, <laughs> <laughs> all oh. right, we're we're getting. We have a few minutes left. I, uh, you, what else do you want to tell us? What you got? Well, how long uh, were you in Belgium before? I was in before. Belgium from January of '94 till just the end of November. Huh. And uh, almost a year. Almost a year. Um, and we did we did really well. We finished a little ahead of, of, of my estimated schedule, and we finished a little bit under budget. Um, but we got a really good, solid crew in place over there. Yep. Mm. So you were there to uh, set it up, not just Yeah, I, I moved over there, set up the office, hired staff, trained them, got everything in place, and then I moved back. Okay. Which, yep. is, which is why and, I, I and said I want to keep right. my departments yeah. because... And you left it, and, and Elizabeth and Herman ran it for a while Elizabeth anyway. Elizabeth and Herman ran it for a while, and, and then the, the, I guess the international department, I think John yep. uh, meets with Justice, they moved the office eventually. and. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we had John Jordan on the show uh, yeah. a few weeks ago, and um, he did ultimately create the international business mm -hmm. department mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. company. It was great. Uh, he's still handsome like and sly and funny <laughs> and smart as he ever was. Well, that's a guy that could wear a bow tie with style. Let me tell you, <laughs> yeah, John Jordan. He yeah, he's a great guy. He yeah. he was on the show. We had we had a really nice nice chat with him. But he, he would go on to to form the Wizards International Business and set up offices mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, yeah, Belgium, but also France, and mm -hmm. eventually Italy, and um, uh, we had uh, distribution all over the place, and it's pretty, I don't know, I, I think the international stuff, uh, the international aspects of the business were really important mm -hmm. to us from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it just always made sense to me, like, well, if this game, if people like it, I mean, what more natural way to grow your revenue than to take it into other, other yeah, markets? Other markets, yeah. Yeah. Right, and uh, tabletop games, especially in Europe, it was, um, uh, it, it took off very quickly, and then mm. in Japan as well. <coughs> yeah, between the international department and the various international offices, the translations were done pretty well too, which is back then was a frequent problem. The game would be, you know, they translated into another language, and it just it made no sense. For, yeah, you know, you got to magic, magic, did, magic, magic translation. I'm trying well. to remember. Did you do press checks before we hired? You know, like eventually Tom Waterstand or Rachel Hampstead. Uh, even after said, Tom, you yeah. may recall the the summer magic fiasco where I called. Oh God! Everybody Tom wants in the to middle talk of the about night. Summer, yeah. I called him Tom in the middle <laughs> of the night. They're Tell printing the this stuff. Well, like, yeah. we go in and I'm, I'm, you know, and Tom had said, "Hey, you know, we you proof." The sheets. The proof Tom, sheets are coming out. This is Tom Waterstrand. Yeah, Tom Waterstrand. Yeah. He was head of production. Yeah. So I go out there. You know, it's afternoon. To Cardamundi. Yeah, to Cardamundi getting torn out. And I go out there, and they pull out some sheets, and I look at them, and they are really dark. I mean, you can barely make out some of the words against the wooden box background on yeah. the green cards. Mm. And I said, uh, no, this this doesn't look good. And he <laughs> said, well, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? I said, well. I want a phone. <laughs> you know, so I call, I wake up Tom Waterstrand. It's like four in the morning or three in the morning. Like, Tom, yeah. Tom, Tom, you know. And he says, well, I'm not there. You're there. <laughs> Stop printing. <laughs> yeah. And they Stop printing. Yeah. Stop All the press. So they stopped printing. And, and, and I, we overnighted, well, not quite overnight back then, but we quickly as we could got some uh, of the uh, one or two of the sheets to Tom, and he he, he confirmed, yeah, this is not acceptable mm. quality. So then they were supposed to destroy. You know, they had a big a big grinder, and any time there was a misprint or a problem with the sheets or something, they were to feed them in the grinder. Cardamondi had gone through great security requirements, yeah, which right. 
some of which I required, some of which Peter expressed a concern, and some of which Luke Mertens, who ran it, it, it was just, we were a, a big revenue stream for them almost overnight. Mm -hmm. And they were making tons of money printing magic. It was like printing money. Mm. And so, I mean, they had pat downs on their staff. They had, I mean, real tight security. And st still, little bits of stuff got out. Mm. And anytime you had a fluke like that, I mean, the prices on them just, they were asked, I, what was it, uh, Wyvern or something? They, they printed magic on the front of a card and Wyvern on the, the, uh, the back. Yeah, it was it a was different, uh, different collectible game. Oh. Wyvern was another trading card game that, yeah. uh, and um, I think US Games published yeah. it. And uh, they had Fallen Empires on the other side. Right. Magic oh. yeah. Fallen Empires. They, I mean, they had misprinted yeah. it, right? Yeah. Those, they those were cards. all to be destroyed. No, no, you found them out on the market. Mm -hmm. Somebody had gotten some, mm -hmm. and people were paying big bucks for them because they were rare. And and you know, but I but I just I I put a hole on the printing, and I I don't, I don't think it ultimately caused a huge delay in the release. I think it was a more a matter of they had to go back and well, I think and it was something a, up. I think it was the, a core set. I think this is uh, you know, it's so embarrassing to not remember these things. And and trust mm -hmm. me, there's magic fans out there that are just sitting on there yeah. <laughs> waiting for new data. New on, data? On, well, because there, there's a lot of mystery around this particular um, misprint. And uh. I think it's related to Edgar, which was a misprint. Anyway, I don't remember all this stuff. That's mm. why that's why I brought you out here. I just I just remember that. I, I just didn't remember. I was you. stuck there and had to make the decision, I just, and I was like crapping myself because if, you're if, be if having, I made the wrong decision, it was a lot of money. You're, yeah. You're, you know? you're, yeah, you're gonna have <laughs> there's gonna be you're gonna have internet stalkers now who are gonna pry you for additional information about oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> about that about that misprint because there's a lot of mystique around it. Mm. There, well, there. you gotta realize, you know, Magic when it came out first came out and then the sale blew up so bad that for the first so good year <laughs> well you were so the much? one that had to handle all the logistics it blew up so bad it, it came okay. with problems yeah. but yeah we had to air freight every magic card mm. for that first year tons and tons and tons yeah, for... and, and we were a big revenue stream for five different airlines okay mm. in fact at one point i got a Boeing engine bumped off of an airplane onto the tarmac at Zaventum oh. to get our pallet of cards. Oh my gosh. Okay. And, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, all I had logistics what, people from what, all over Europe wanting to take me out to dinner. Boy, I'll tell what, you what. what mm. One, one, yeah, one Christmas we were, our, our shipping capacity was limited by the capacity of Schiphol Airport. Yeah. Mm. Free. We literally yeah. could not move it here fast enough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we could not even begin to afford the luxury of having them spend a month on a tr on a freighter, yeah, you know, right, coming across right, the ocean. Right. It so took us, took us a while to get there. We did. We did after about I think it's about eighteen months that we yeah. lived in that. Mm. Where well, we, we spent, got more lines opened up. We, we spent yeah. yeah well, we had, well, it was planning well enough. Yeah, planning the supply <coughs> well enough mm -hmm. that 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 we could um, that when initial even if even though we weren't meeting demand yet for a while right. uh, that that the print runs could get big enough that you could ship it in waves and so you could have right. okay we could. We could get Sit. enough in for our first ship out, right. and by then, hopefully, yeah. the second wave came in. Right. But they, Cardamundi had to to have two or three more lines. Made. No, I don't They're, know. It, like a yeah. million dollars each, handmade in Switzerland. Took seven months to get one, and all, you know. Yeah, under the moonlight. So yeah, uh, <laughs> they were printing magic around the clock, seven days a week, stopping only one shift on Sunday for maintenance. Mm. Otherwise, they printed around the clock, and we were falling behind mm. at yeah. a, an increasing clip. And uh, you know the the sales just you know blew up and and we're going crazy and then the distributor channels were yeah 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 you yeah, know a mess yeah. so uh, so so yeah it was a lot of fun and and I <laughs> I loved going there I loved Belgium the people were wonderful the food was great the climate was okay it was just like Seattle so here, here's the question though did you have a job when you got back. Yeah, I did. I came back. And I, <laughs> How many departments did you lose? You uh, <laughs> well, I think I still had the same. At one point, I got to 11 departments, mm. and that was too much. I, yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't support 11 direct reports. And mm. I, was, I remember going to Pier. Uh, you know, so we moved logistics under Carol, and, and yeah. we, moved, uh, we moved a couple of things around. And, and, but even right before I'd moved to Belgium, we had reorganized me yeah. to where I was the VP of company support, which was mm. internal operations and IT and all those kind of things. And it, because operations is actually, in that context, is actually a, a, a different kind of a... Mm. So, 
at that point I was a VP of company support and I came back and, and, you know, in that time while I was there in that year, we, you know, we kept taking more and more space in this office park. Finally, we had outgrown the office park. There wasn't a square foot left in it, hmm. you know? And so, uh, we went out on a hunt for, for a bigger facility. And at that time, Peter had begun negotiations with TSR yeah. and we saw yeah. a, a, a potentially really big spurt coming. So we ended up settling on, and it came down to this building and, and one of the glass towers across from the airport. You remember yeah, the, yeah. the one where 13 coins is in? And, but, but the decision was made, rightly so, that our corporate culture didn't really fit in that glass box. Mm. It, it was a, a much more real, we had the best corporate, co man. <laughs> the so best we, place ever so, to work, you know. So I, I want to cut to something here. We we are out of time, uh, but I want to ask you one, uh, ask two questions mm -hmm. real, real quick before we uh, before we wrap okay, this up. Okay, So, you thinking back? I mean, thinking back on Wizards of the Coast, mm -hmm. all we did together, <laughs> all that time, you know, like what um, what what did you take away from that? Like what 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 do you still carry with you that that uh, that you got there? Wow, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, professionally, it, it was the greatest time of my life. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I mean, I've been in some great professions and I've had some where I've really had a lot of fun. I've been successful and everything, but there's, there's nothing like the ride yeah. and it was the ride. I mean, it yeah. was, it was the bull that was going to just trample your ass into the ground and you laughed every minute <laughs> you were right. It, mm. it was. Yeah. I don't think anybody can actually understand it yeah. unless they go through that kind of, it, it is so singularly different. Right. Yeah. And, and I think it matured me a great deal. You know, going into this, we all thought we were pretty mature, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we matured some more and realized that was not true. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but it gave me a whole different outlook on, you know, on the world and on, on business and, and responsibility, it, it it is a huge part of shaping me to, to who I am. I mean, it's, it's a very other than other than the birth of my children, it's the mm. most significant thing that has happened to me in my life. Yeah. yeah. What? Uh, and so, conversely, is there anything that you think about that um, you, you're really glad you left it behind? <laughs> like, okay, I'm glad. Anything about the Wizards experience that? You know, uh, uh, the only thing I'd say is, and, and it was inevitable, is, you know, we, we grew and grew and grew and we just kept growing and kept growing. And we reached the point where it just wasn't possible to hang on to the corporate culture that we'd created the way we wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually, if you become a, a fiscally responsible and accountable enough organization with enough screaming <laughs> shareholders that show up every year and bound around Peter, why do we spend all this money on this, you know? And, <laughs> right? Yeah, I know what you're talking <laughs> about. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> What, I shut his wait, butt wait, down, wait, wait, let me where, tell you. What, <laughs> I did. Why I did we have to buy all these down. desks? That was a stupid attorney. <laughs> was a, a dead attorney that gave us a lousy advice. And, uh, uh, but, but you reach the point where you can't continue to do everything by the seat of your pants. You, yeah. You've mm. got yeah. to have yeah. structure. You have to bring in expertise you don't have. And at that point, inevitably, it starts to... to compress your corporate culture does. So that, so that amazing, wonderful, you know, living in the moment thing kind of started to taper down there towards the end. And, Eventually and, the hangover comes. Uh, yeah. And uh, I think at that uh, point when I finally left, I, the point like, well, okay, you know, for me, the best days have happened. And yeah, it, it, I think it was, it, yeah. It's a, just a lot of corporate work from here on. So what, what wonderful memories. All wonderful memory. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful memory. And uh, thank you for coming on to share them with us. My pleasure, thank Peter. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. It's great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks.
All right. Wow, that was, uh, uh, it was great to have uh, Jay with us today. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here. Uh, thanks to Emma Larkin for being my co-host. Thanks for Tarek uh, Guder for being our producer, and Will Geisler for our technical director. And uh, I hope that you'll come back next week. We will have Doug Ferguson. Ooh, Doug. Uh, yeah. will be on, who worked in um, uh, sales and um, had a big gaming mm -hmm. background, ran a store before, and um, has worked at the Pokemon Company for a number of years after that. Yeah. Uh, has had a great career in tabletop games and remembers a lot about Magic the Gathering. And, uh, and we'll be streaming again from Caldea Studios. So, uh, yes, please come back and join us. Thanks again very much, Jay, for joining us today and being our guest on Fireside. And thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll see you next week.